We're going to discuss here Pierre Robin's sequence. Uh, the USMLE likes to test on this one, so I would be aware of at least how to recognize it. And for the most part, I think recognizing it is going to be what you're going to be expected to know for uh, step two. For step three, you may want to know a few things about management. Uh, so Pierre Robin's sequence is a group of congenital malformations. It's really a triad of congenital malformations characterized by micrognathia, which is a small chin, cleft palate, which is an opening of the palate uh, in the mouth, and glossoptosis, which is a retropositioning of the tongue. Typically, this is going to present as a neonatal emergency because of airway obstruction, and that's because of the abnormally positioned tongue. It can uh, flip back and, uh, and block out the airway. Usually, Pierre Robin sequence is part of a syndrome, and there are various uh, diseases that can cause Pierre Robin sequence, and Pierre Robin sequence is just these three things together. So these three things together is Pierre Robin sequence. Uh, but you can have an isolated Pierre-Robin uh, syndrome in which uh, that's the only finding that you have, and that only is in 20 to 40 percent of cases. So the syndromes that can uh, manifest Pierre-Robin sequence uh, include a lot. Uh, I've tried to put these in sort of in the order uh, of importance, uh, although fetal alcohol syndrome could probably be a little higher up. Uh, anyhow, Stickler syndrome is... Uh, the, probably the most, it is the most common, 30 to 50 percent of syndromes um, of Pierre Robin sequences that come with syndromes, it's going to be Stickler syndrome. And this is uh, a Pierre Robin sequence in association with some joint issues, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Treacher Collins syndrome, which is a facial dysplasia. A velocardiofacial syndrome, which includes uh, all of the uh, 11 Q22, or no, sorry, 22 Q11 uh, mutations. So that includes DeGeorge syndrome, uh, which is thymic aplasia, uh, CHARGE syndrome, Edwards syndrome, trisomy 11 Q, Mobius, and fetal alcohol syndrome. Uh, you don't need to be aware of all of these. Uh, I would say you should probably be aware of Treacher Collins, uh, DeGeorge, charge, Edwards, and fetal alcohol syndrome at least. Uh, may also be seen as an isolated anomaly, uh, and in these cases uh, what you're going to look for is uh, an issue with a gene called SOX9, which is on the, uh, which is on the long arm of chromosome 17. And SOX9 actually has a couple functions that are really different. So uh, it implicates the skeleton, and that's probably what leads to the Pierre Robin sequence when this is mutated. But it also uh, codes for, for some functions of the reproductive system. It increases production of SRY, which, remember, is uh, that little gene on the Y chromosome. Remember, the Y chromosome doesn't do a whole lot except for make you a male. Um, but uh, it, it uh, increases production of SRY, and SRY is uh, an anti-malarian hormone, the transcription product, uh, translation product of SRY. It's anti-malarian, so that induces malformation. So I, I believe they call this uh, campomeliac dysplasia. I'm going off the top of my head there. Okay, so the features for Pierre Robin sequence, if you remember the triad, you should be good, okay? Uh, now, in general, there is respiratory distress, usually presenting in the neonatal period, and this will be particularly noted when the baby is supine, because if you think of how the tongue is, and when you're laying down, the tongue is going to be pulled down with gravity, and it's going to be more likely to block your airway. Uh, so this is why these babies, we want them to sleep prone. Now, in general, we want babies sleeping on their back. 99.9% .9 of babies, we want them sleeping on their back. But these Pierre Robin babies are the exception. We will have these babies sleeping prone because it's more, we're more concerned about that tongue falling back into their pharynx and, and obstructing the airway. Uh, on the face, micrognathia is invariably linked with Pierre Robin sequence. Uh, there can be auricular anomalies, but that doesn't have to be. Uh, there's usually a U-shaped cleft palate, and the thought as to why it's U-shaped rather than V-shaped is because the tongue is in an abnormal position during fetal development, and so the palate doesn't close all the way. And so that U-shape is sort of like the tongue's footprint. 
Uh, glossoptosis, this is, as we mentioned, a, uh, the tongue is in an abnormal position. Uh, you can also see retraction of uh, the inferior dental arch, which is going to result in an overbite, and the mandible has an obtuse genial angle. Uh, the extremities, all, now all these things, they don't have to be in Piero band sequence, just these three things, but you may see some of these things, and they are also associated with some of the various syndromes that Piero band sequence can be associated with. So I put these up here, um, especially these things on the right side and the auricular anomalies. I put these up here so that you know what else to look for. If you have a baby with Piero band sequence, great. We need to know though. Do they have isolated Piero band sequence or do they have Piero band sequence in association with the syndrome? So you should be looking uh, at the extremities, uh, club feet, short femur, coxa valgus or varus, genu valgus, uh, listen to the heart. There can be benign murmurs, but there can also be congenital heart defects. There can also be pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary hypertension. Uh, as far as the, uh, the GU system, uh, there can be uh, cryptorchidism, hydronephrosis, or a hydrocele. So this is a baby with Piero band sequence. You know, kind of, uh, it's a micrognathia, and it makes it kind of look like there's an overbite because the uh, the maxilla is normal, but the the, the mandible is hypoplastic. Um, so it's a retrognathia. So again, here you have a really, really, really small chin and an apparent overbite. But note here that these eyes and these ears are normal. So this is not a baby, most likely, that has Piero band sequence in association with something like Treacher Collins syndrome. Uh, but this could be an isolated Piero band sequence, or it could be um, associated with something else like Stickler syndrome uh, or fetal alcohol syndrome. Could be fetal alcohol syndrome, actually, because if you note know here, there's not a really apparent uh, filthrum, but it's hard to tell. Okay, uh, so here's another one. Again, just look at the chin. This is a U-shaped cleft palate. You tend to see these U-shaped cleft palates in Piero band sequence, whereas otherwise you would see more of a V-shaped cleft palate. Although you can get a V-shaped cleft palate, in Piero band sequence. That's perfectly possible. Here's a much worse one. Now this is just a U-shaped cleft palate. I don't know if this is Piero band sequence or not, but that's what a U-shaped cleft palate looks like. So U-shaped cleft palate versus a V-shaped cleft palate. It's really just the angle. This is glossoptosis. So look at here's the gums and here's where the tongue is sitting. So this, this tongue is abnormally uh, posterior. Uh, so here's a uh, Piero band sequence in uh, some, a child and then some adults. Uh, just notice the uh, smaller chin, very unpronounced. So what are uh, some of these other PRS-associated syndromes? Uh, there's Stickler syndrome, which if you had to take all the syndromes that are PRS-associated, this would be the most common. Um, in this case, you have uh, all of the, the uh, Piero band sequence, the micrognathia, the cleft palate, the glossoptosis, uh, but you also will have prominent and hyperextensible joints. Uh, you can get arthritis. Uh, they could be hypotonic, there could be mitral valve prolapse, as well as ocular problems such as myopia, cataracts, and retinal detachment. DeGeorge syndrome, as you might remember, this is a hypoparathyroid hypocalcemia. Uh, these uh, can have congenital heart defects, especially tetralogy. There's usually thymic aplasia. You can get a chest x-ray and look for that. And then they can also have immunodeficiency since they don't have a thymus. Uh, treacher collins syndrome is zygomatic dysgenesis. Uh, they'll have narrow and downward slanting palpebral fissures. They can have eyelid colobomas, and uh, they usually, about 50% of cases, will have conductive hearing loss. Mobius syndrome is very rare. Uh, there's facial paralysis associated with this. There's also limb anomalies, uh, chest wall anomalies, and strabismus. Trisomy 11Q syndrome, they tend to have a long philthrum, a retracted lower lip, mental retardation, and uh, male infants will have micropenis. So here's an example of uh, Stickler syndrome. So you kind of note the, uh, it's hard to see, it's kind of cut off, but there's a small chin, 
Um, there's also a high arched palate, which could have been a cleft palate at one time, uh, and then joint hyperextensibility. So the joint hyperextensibility, in addition to the uh, to the Pierre Robin sequence, uh, will put you at a likely diagnosis of Stickler syndrome, and this is a collagen defect. And there's various genes that can be affected, more than one. The development depends on the underlying cause. Pierre Robin sequence is an isolated syndrome, only affects physical and linguistic development. Uh, you'll manage that surgically, closing the cleft palate at about one to two years of age. Feeding difficulties can lead to failure to thrive. Uh, sufficient spontaneous mandibular growth will usually take place within the first few months of life. That will help relieve the airway obstruction. It needs to grow a little bit more before these children are able to uh, take oral feeds most of the time. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about uh, eating uh, similar to peers their age. Uh, a lot of times these babies will be able to feed by bottle, uh, but they'll need special nipples. The diagnosis of Pierre band sequence can be suspected on the clinical evaluation. Uh, remember, it's just a triad. And then in conjunction with radiographs, you should always do genetic testing. Uh, to obtain a clinical diagnosis if you suspect any syndromes. So uh, you want to look for inspection for other anomalies, look at the eyes, look at the ears, look at the limbs, uh, and that can indicate what specific genetic testing you want to get. Initial management, this is going to be a multidisciplinary approach. You want to include a practitioner who is experienced in pediatric airway management. Um, so possibly your friendly pediatric anesthesiologist. Uh, you want to get a pediatric surgery consultation uh, because in, when there are cases that involve severe airway compromise, as well as if there's respiratory distress or failure to thrive, then uh, they may require a uh, tracheostomy or a gastrostomy. Uh, airway, these babies while they're in the hospital should be on apnea monitors. Baby should sleep in the prone position to draw the tongue outward. And then the second line, if that fails, if there's continued apneic spells, uh, you can do oral airway placement, laryngeal mask, nasopharyngeal stenting, short-term intubation, or tracheostomy. It's really going to be at the call of the pediatric surgeon. Uh, for feeding, you want to feed the baby in the upright position. Uh, these babies have a tendency to have reflux, uh, so feeding them in the upright position will help to ameliorate that. In very severe cases, a gastrostomy will be needed temporarily. And then family education, as they take these babies home, if they do require to be on the tracheostomy or gastrostomy tubes very long, which usually they don't, uh, then they can be educated on how to manage that. That's more with uh, the babies that have treacher Cullen syndrome. They'll need to be on those uh, tubes a lot longer. Uh, consultation with a feeding specialist is useful to uh, help reduce any complications with feeding. Uh, you should definitely teach these parents how to do the Heimlich maneuver. Remember though, the Heimlich maneuver is different for babies than for, uh, than for adults, so you should be aware of that. Um, but uh, family education will be important for when they take these children home uh, to prevent any uh, complications that might happen there. Long term, uh, as the mandible grows, usually the issues with the airway will self-resolve uh, within the first few months, but there is an increased risk of sudden infant death syndrome uh, because of the airway issues. Uh, most children are able to consume a PO diet by three years of age, and then most children will have a normal facial profile by four to six years of age. Uh, you may do some, there may be some surgery uh, that can be involved in that. It's really going to be at the call of the surgeon uh, as well as the wishes of, of the parent as well. Um, you can see that this child had surgery and um, with a much, much more normal facial profile at, uh, at this point.